I think if you're considering laundering money, avoiding taxes, buying drugs, any of these things, digital currency is probably the worst way to do it. Every government in the world is looking at this because it's both a threat and an opportunity. I think the threat comes very simply from people operating outside the grid and if you run a business, it's much harder for the government to collect sales taxes. Governments have many, many concerns that range from tax collection to banking fraud. We have rules about how banks have to report major transactions. And do these rules apply to Bitcoin? They're, they're meant to deter money laundering. But at first, it's been very uncertain from one country to the next whether this really should be regulated like regular money or whether it should be regulated differently. It's governed simply by the members of a network, and the rules of it can only be changed if the network decides to change it. So one of the key things is really the decentralized power, that when money is issued by a government, ultimately there is a president, dictator, central banker who can change the rules. And this can be used as a way for the government to raise money, to collect taxes indirectly, to devalue the currency in circulation. But with digital currency, this can't happen. And the whole process of governance is decentralized to the members of the network who share the burdens of record keeping, who have equal access to the information, and who are not vulnerable to expropriation by some central authority. Bitcoin has exposed many of the most vulnerable spots of the world financial system. And probably number one, which everyone agrees is a problem, is the cost of international money transfer. Even if you want to send money from Switzerland to New York, you know, two mega banking centers, it's going to cost you 5% spread and take a couple of days. Bitcoin doesn't know borders. Bitcoin can be instantly sent anywhere in the world between any two people connected to a computer. And it can be done with even more integrity and safety and security than the money transfer system we have now with SWIFT codes and many intermediate banks and so forth. The current payment systems we have now, which for most people are really credit cards, have well-known weaknesses and costs that have for many years been a sore in the side of businesses and something that consumers resist having to pay fees for and have to worry about the security of their numbers. It's a very cumbersome process to just pay with a visa at the cash register. The whole point of digital currency is to streamline that, make it cheaper, safer, and it's really exposed how much room for improvement there is in payments processing. Whether it's domestic or international, it's still a very costly thing to do in the 21st century. There's a lot of people that think Bitcoin allows you to stay secret. I think quite to the contrary. As soon as someone figures out your digital wallet address, they can see all the money you've spent, there's in principle way less privacy with digital currency than with money that's passed hand to hand. This may in the end force people to behave better if people can watch how you're behaving in real time. And even if I don't know your digital wallet address, I can follow you and see, you know, first this person went to 7-Eleven and then to the dry cleaner. Then I can go on the blockchain and say, give me all the people who were at 7-Eleven and the dry cleaner at 8 o'clock and then I can get your address that way and then find everything that you've done. So you see people doing things like changing their digital wallet address with every single transaction. And this would help you stay anonymous, but it's obviously costly and cumbersome. Banks and financial firms need to understand digital currency because it's very threatening to their business model. What banks do is keep track of money in people's accounts and then transfer money from one account to another, charging you a fee for the custody and for the processing and storage and transfer. And Bitcoin directly attacks all of this. And if banks don't find a way to do this at least as well as the Bitcoin technology does it, in the long run, their viability is very threatened. So I think it's a technological breakthrough that's very much in the interest of the banks to try to adapt for their own purposes.